In this video, we're going to talk about purines and pyrimidines. And we've already talked about what a nucleotide is. A nucleotide is essentially the structure we see right here. It has an, an aromatic nitrogen base, it has a sugar, and it has a, a, some kind of phosphate attached to it. So we have also talked about ribose and deoxyribose sugars. The difference between a ribose sugar and a deoxyribose sugar is just by the fact what is located on the second carbon on the sugar molecule. If we see a hydroxide attached to the second, uh, second, uh, second carbon, it's a ribose sugar. And if we just see a hydrogen on the second carbon, it's a deoxyribose, that's all. Now, here comes the question, a little, you gotta think about it a little bit. What is the sugar, uh, why is the sugar and the phosphate known as the, as the backbone, as the DNA backbone? Think about it. This stuff right here is known as the back, backbone of a, of a DNA. And when DNA is formed, we don't really use all three of the phosphates, and we just use two of them. The the rest, the pyrophosphate is used as an energy source, or it kind of it's kind of it's kind of left out. We don't need it. The answer to this question is because the sugar and the phosphate is the invariable part of the structure. The only thing that's changing is the aromatic base, and that is the variable part. So the backbone is the phosphate and the sugar group, which is maintained throughout the chain. And we have just discussed this, that nitrogen base is the variable component of the nucleosome. And that should be, that should make, that should make sense already. So there are two groups of nitrogen bases. We have, we have talked that this stuff right here, this aromatic group is the changing variable part of the nucleotide. And there are four different possible aromatic rings or structures that can be attached to the sugar molecule. And, the, and these two, and these, and these four, possibilities are divided into two groups of nitrogen bases. The first group is called a purine base. And even before we talk about its components and the two, uh, uh, the two um, uh, nitrogen bases we, that are part of it, we want to kind of highlight the fact that these are characterized by two aromatic rings. So purines, whenever you see a nucleotide with two aromatic rings attached to it, that should be a purine. It's either a adenine or a guanine. If it's an adenine, the only the, the only difference. So if you see these two, uh, if adenine and guanine, the only difference really is these. Uh, it's it's colored already, but an adenine is is a two aromatic uh, ring with just a uh, NH two on it, and a guanine is when we have an oxygen in place of the NH two. And then some more additions over here. And that's just really, we're not really getting into the depth of this at the moment. We're just trying to understand the, the overall uh, aspect of it so we can identify them. If it's, or you can just think of it like this. If it's more complicated, it's a guanine. If it's less complicated, it's an adenine. It's a perfect way to memorize at the moment. We're just trying to, we're just trying to recognize these for the moment. And if you're an IB or an AP student, this is very nice in the sense that you can understand the structure it. And if you're a MCAT student, then you just you just gotta memorize this. Eventually, it just kicks in your head. Eventually, and the second thing is the second group is the pyrimidine. It took me a long time to say pyrim pyrimidine. I, I kind of still mutter on it, but it doesn't matter. The the pyrimidine is characterized by the one aromatic ring on it. If you see a structure of nuclear or of DNA, and you see that if if it's a molecular or if it's a uh, chemical structure, you're probably, you're probably gonna see the aromatic rings on it. And if you see one aromatic ring, it's a pyrimidine. A pyrimidine is just a, it con it's composed of the cytosine and the thiamine. So the cytosine, likewise, is, is very similar to the thiamine. It's just a couple bases that are changes that, that, are, that are different. So we have, th this is very important, this is gonna be very interesting later on. I just want to highlight that the methyl group that that is attached over here. And we also want to we want to highlight the fact that thiamine is only used in DNA. And why is that? Do you remember? Let's 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 just ask that question. Why is thiamine only used in DNA? 
The answer to that question is when DNA is copied into mRNA, mRNA, so RNA does not have thymine. It's a, there is a replacement of your, uh, your cell by thymine. Sorry, there's a, so thymine is replaced by your cell. If we have, for example, we have a, we have a, a base, uh, or this is the template strand that's been copied, and this is the mRNA that's been formed, and we have, we have, let's say, we have a couple bases on it, and the blue bases are thymine. Thymine, let, let me just put another variable inside it. Let's ignore the, I mean, let's just change the colors, but why not? Hang on. We have different colors inside it. We have kind of different four possibilities. We have, could it be a purine or a thymine? So let's say we have this struct, we have this code right here. We have a T, we have a G, we have a T, oh sorry, a C, and we have an NA. So this is translated from DNA to mRNA. What this is going to look like, this is a complementary uh, complementary structure or complementary to the template strand. And, and that just means that the opposite of hopefully this makes sense so that so if we have adenine it's always going to go with thymine and cytosine is going to go with guanine it's the other way around so if we have adenine it's going to go it's going to give us a thymine over here well guess what it's not going to give us a thymine it's going to give us a uracil and if there had this been dna dna replication this would have been different but and hopefully that will make sense later on but you should look up, if this is not clear at the moment, I recommend you search this video up on my channel. It should be there. Just write DNA replication and you'll find it. Or, or you can just search transcription. That, that, will, that will make you understand what I'm trying to get at the moment. So we have discussed, uh, okay, and this is the difference, the chemical difference of uh, the difference between a thymine and a uracil. It's just the replacement of a me methyl group that's attached over here. That's the only one difference. You remove that and we have a uracil. And, the, and, and these small differences can cause mutations in our bodies and, and our bodies have to kind of check when during replication of these small mistakes are made. And that's, that's why it's very easy to have a mutation sometimes. Not that our, and our bodies have a lot of mechanisms to recognize that as well. And that, that's